Alright, what's up YouTube? Exploding Window here with a little bit of a different video today. Today I'll be doing a tutorial on bullet beams. Now, what are bullet beams, you ask? Well, take a look at this example right here. This is a video from Corridor Digital called Shock Troopers. And uh, we got Matt from evike.com here laying down some fire. And right here you can see the bullet beams. See these things right there? Those are bullet beams and a pretty good way to indicate how powerful the weapon you're shooting is or just in what direction you're shooting in general. And it kind of gives it more of a physical effect to your fire than just muzzle flash and then a blood spat over there. So, and sometimes with heavier weapons like a machine gun, they, it, it will actually um, emit that sort of bullet beam. So, I also I, I also use this in my short film here. If you have not seen that, I'll have the link in the description and an annotation on the screen, so you can go watch that. It's my latest short film. So, boom, boom, you can see two there, and then two in this next shot. So you saw one there, and another one there. Now mine aren't as practical. They, it's it's a dark room with a very bright, um, with a very bright bullet beam. It looks kind of impractical, but it worked, and it gave a nice effect. You can kind of see here. there's two shots there. I wonder if I can pause it. There, you kind of saw that one. It goes directly from the barrel of my gun straight to his neck, which is where I was aiming. That kind of gives you the the more if you if it's a shot like this and you can't directly see, you know, sometimes you're at a good angle to where you might actually see a trace around. Um, so it's a good indication of where I'm shooting and where the gun, you know, is firing from. So, anyways, bullet you can just see him passing through the guy's left shoulder. It gives it that night, nice, just fleshy. See, look, there's another one. It gives it that night, just nice, just fleshy feel. So, what we will do is go and import some footage. Um, I'm just going to take some of the footage from my film, unedited footage, just so we can work with some raw footage, just so you guys have an idea of what to what to expect if you're using raw footage. If you're using, you know, color graded um, footage, then that's that's going to be easy too. So, let's actually do. Okay, let's do this one because this is. Let's see how this one will work out. Okay, so what you want to do is drag, click and drag your clip right into the composition. If you didn't already know that, and it'll already make a automatic composition. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just with the footage we're working with here, I'm going to set the endpoint. So Control Shift D to split that layer, and then you can delete this one and drag this one all the way to the, the beginning. Kind of makes it a little easier to work with. And then, so as soon as I start putting my weapon down. I'm going to end it there, I'm going to delete that top layer, and we're just going to drag this in here. We will zoom in just so we can, you know, work with. I don't still, if you guys know how to do the uh, quick thing to set, what the hotkey is to set an in and out point, please leave it in the uh, comments below because I fucking still have not figured that out. I've been using After Effects for quite a while now, so. So, what you will need to do here, um, I'm actually going to add some quick color correction. So, I have some presets that I have bought. In. So, we will use. Okay, well, it's called Image Adjust. So, there we go. There it is. So, I'm just going to drag that onto my clip. Kind of adds it more contrast and whatnot. So, and then here's a quick tip also. If you go down to here, you can select audio and then waveform. And you can work with, if you have what I have, I actually fired my gas blowback uh, gun here to give me kind of a uh, cue of when I need the muzzle flash and um, and the bullet beam to happen. So so let's go ahead and get this, get this effect underway. So we start here. So what you want to do is make a new solid. So layer, fucking Jesus, new solid, or control Y. Uh, make it white. Usually that's the easiest to work with. And then after you have the solid selected, go to effect, generate, and the fifth one down is beam. And you want to click on that. And it will be, it'll be pink and red so you can set the center color to white or whatever color you desire and the other color to maybe a faded orangish yellow kinda gives it that you know bullet beam effect and uh... I know it looks cheesy right now but we'll get to it so also you want to extend the length so it hits both points so you can control exactly where it starts and ends and so again we're on the point where the muzzle flash starts or should start or the gut you know the bullet should start firing so set the ending thickness and starting thickness to about four or five, um, just because of to give it a more thin look. It doesn't go thin, thick, thin. It that's kind of annoying, but you know, yeah. See there, so four point two actually. 
4.2, ha <laughs> 420, okay. So we'll set the time to 50, that's fine. That way we can edit it directly. So 3D perspective, we can we can leave that on. Uh, you want to leave this unchecked because then it'll just composite it on your white solid which you've selected, so uncheck that. And set this here. And right about there is where, you know, just kind of line up your barrel with it. You could even do this and then just come here and kind of, you want to kind of, you don't want it coming directly out of the barrel. So, right now that looks pretty cheesy. But what we're going to do is add a blur. So we're going to add a directional blur. So go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Directional Blur, when you're clicked on your white solid. And kind of line up this little notch with the direction of your shot here. And maybe at about a 10 or f 10 to 20 effect. I think about 20 works. And once you blur it, you can kind of see there, you can see it slightly move here. Let me move over for this. So when I edit this again, you can see how it's, it's turning. So you can right about there is good. Actually, we'll go right, oh, right there. Okay. So here, here's that. And again, this is a suppressed weapon, so I don't really need a big muzzle flash. But what I will do is import my suppressed muzzle flash. The flashes. I'm going to do just one of them. And we'll take this down on the timeline, start it right there. And what I like to do is start it, you know, after the muzzle flash happens, because uh, depending on the length of your suppressor, there's not usually a flare like that and the type of, of suppressor. So I just like to have it here. And I duplicate it a few times to get the smoke a more, uh, to give it a more uh, thick effect. And we go ahead in here and rotate it. And we put it right here. We're going to actually put that solid above this since that is coming out after or before the smoke. So we go ahead and watch it. The beam is still there. So when the muzzle flash happens, the smoke starts to dissipate. And we're not on the second shot yet. So for the beam, we want to hit T for the hotkey for opacity. And you're going to go over here and click this uh, stopwatch for a keyframe. Right when the shot happens, you select it, make a keyframe. One before it, you're going to hit the little yellow button over here it's a to put another keyframe and set the opacity to zero you're going to go forward hit control hold control and move the arrow keys to easily select the timeline by frame by frame so uh, go to the and then one after make another key and hit that to zero so when we go back and ram preview this real quick so there, it just looks like it's coming out real quick like real quick like so we can go ahead and duplicate this solid again and actually move this over so we're going to go here, we can move these keyframes over. We want to line the middle one up right there. So then it's coming out again, and we can go ahead and move this right back and maybe rotate it. Depending on your shot, you can usually duplicate the beam effect, and you know, you can, you can size it down and whatnot. Uh, but if you really want to, you can go ahead and, you know, again, create the solid and hit effect, generate, beam. And you can kind of mess with the colors, reddish effect. It's a little pink in the middle and a little more orange. Give this one a little more orange. Actually, we're going to keep that white. So maybe this one looks a little like it's a little more hot. I'm going to hit the length 100. And we can hide this layer since we're not doing that. We can boom, boom. Make this one a little shorter. So maybe that one's traveling a little bit faster than the past one. Effect, blur and sharpen, directional blur. We're going to hit about... 25 on this one, 25, not 250, so 25, and we'll go right about there. It's easier to, to use this instead, so negative 88 was good. And then if it's in motion like it is now, we'll add another blur. We'll go effect blur and sharpen Gaussian blur, and we'll add effect about 5, so it blurs it a little more, so it blends in with the blurriness of the shot. We'll go ahead and do that to this one as well. So blur, sharpen, Gaussian blur, hit about five. So, and then we can go ahead and pre-compose. So these three muzzle flashes I've added together are just to kind of densen the smoke a little more. So it gives it a little more smoke effect. Oh, and then we're going to have to add. So we're going to over here, hit T for the opacity, stopwatch, 
and I go back and another keyframe zero and go one forward two forward actually and zero again so then it shows up for one frame again and we'll go here on these three muzzle flashes we'll right click it and go pre-compose just name it whatever you want you can just leave it pre-comp one or you can do uh, first shot so you know which one you're doing with and just duplicate that and drag it over to where it's being shot boom is where it happens so we're gonna hoe we're gonna hoe? no we're not boom right about there there so there's the second one and you move that over to right here and once again the white solids are on top so when we go back and ram preview this preview ram preview this and then we play it we got oh, boom so there's your effect you got boom 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 and you can also um, hit T on the opacity for the uh, first keyframe. Maybe dub it down a bit, about 80%, so that it doesn't look so uh, profound. And it kind of also blends in with your shot. Maybe we're going to go 90 for this one. And then we'll hit here. Boom, hit T for opacity. We're going to do 85 for that since it's a more brighter color. And once again, we can hit ramp preview. You can go play it again. Boom, boom. That's a nice effect. So, there it is. You can sort of track this muzzle flash if you wanted to. This one, no. This one right here. Um, you can just click the stopwatch button, and as you're framing frame, just keep a part of it. Oh, wait, sorry. That's the wrong one. Just keep a part of this f shot like by the barrel. So, you know, this thicker cloud over here, just kind of keep it in front of the barrel because that's where it was. You can just sort of move it over the keyframe until it dissipates, and then you can just kind of leave it where it is. Same with this next one. We can also do that. So, boom. Going to move it over. Shot's not really moving much, so we don't need to do much with it. So, just a simple cleanup effect. We can fit up to 100% and ram preview that. And boom. That looks a lot better. Can't even tell. And then you can go in, render this out, and add your sound effects, and it'll look a little something like this. Okay, so now that we have our shot imported here, we don't have any sound effects since we did render this from After Effects, so I'm going to have to go in and find the original shot and layer that sound effect over it. It's this one right here. Okay. Now we can go in. There it is. So, again, we can find the muzzle flashes. I think that's the first frame where it starts emitting. So we'll go ahead here. Line this up perfectly right there. Shorten this to line that up. So when you play it, that lines up good. Turn on the effect on just in case. And boom. Alright, then we'll go and import your sound effects of choice. Quick tip here, if you want good sound effects, layer the shit out of them. So I don't just have one sound effect, I used a few. These are my sound effects. Do you see all this? These folders are filled with sound effects. So we'll go down here to weapons. Actually we'll go here. Um, use either this one or this one. Okay, it was definitely this one. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn this down a little bit, but then we'll add this. We're going to control C V and we will turn it down. Uh, obviously this depends on if you have Sony Vegas or not. I'm sorry for uh, Mac users that don't have Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. <coughs> We'll not use that one because that's a stupid sound effect from Modern Warfare, so... So that's... And if you add... If you keep in, so we can actually cut these right here, delete that, delete that, and start fading them out right as the shot happens, and then we hear more of the actual sound effect echoing through this room, uh, because this is the main and concrete plant, so... You can kind of hear the natural echo in this room, and it kind of sounds a little hollow and a little better. To, a little more true to the shot. And then we'll go and import some more. We'll go condense fight sounds. We'll hit, maybe hit two of those. So here's these are some punches. So we'll go, first one is about there, and the second one, put it right there. So it gives it a little more punchy effect. So maybe tone this down a bit. Eh, a little more. Maybe cut this off right there. Yeah, so you can kind of hear that bass. Gives it a little more effect. Boom. And then we can go ahead and, you know, add something like a, uh, some title bars to this. 
move this up like that to keep me in shot. And so here we have the final product.